Ah, uh, Rome, Italy. You can't talk about the world history without spending so much time talking about Rome. The people were friendly, the food was absolutely amazing, and I really enjoyed the overall vibe. Of any of the places I visited, Rome was the one that I was a bit in awe of, if I'm being perfectly honest, just thinking of where I was. Who else had been there over the centuries, walked the same streets, the same paths, and the like. From the empire itself, the culture, or even the biblical effects that this city has had on the world. All I can say, I was very impressed and humbled as I moved throughout. Prior to going, I was told I would probably not be as impressed with Rome because of all the commercialization. Here's what I'll say. Was there plenty of the commercial element, things to spend money on? Yeah, of course, but it's not any more so than any other big city that you may go to. It didn't stand out, in other words. With a low to moderate effort, you could see and enjoy the city, the history, without spending an arm and a leg or having someone trying to hit you up for money every two seconds. If you find time in your schedule, I highly recommend taking a train from Paris to Rome or at least at some point with your time while you're in Europe. My wife said this was one of her favorite memories from the trip, as she always wanted to do it. I did find it a bit tricky to find which train to take initially when I was looking online a few weeks before. The site we ended up using was called Trainline, as you can see in the video. It was easy to use, and no, they're not sponsoring this video. For this trip, you will spend a good portion of the day on two trains, but the views along the way make it completely worth it as far as I'm concerned. Also if, no no, when, when you do, I suggest going first class. I know you're probably thinking how expensive first class is. Let me just say, it was not. The difference at the time between first class and a normal ticket was only about $50 US total for the two of us. We had a really nice selection of breakfast and lunch served. Hot, I might add, hot food. Beverages, adult and non-adult. To us, one of the best places to view the city was without a doubt here, which is located on top of the Vittorino Museum complex. You do have to pay a fee to use the glass elevator and it takes you up to the very top of, and gives you a gorgeous 360 degree view. I will apologize, I don't remember exactly how much the elevator was, but that's probably actually a good sign because it means it wasn't something outrageous and meant it was well worth it. If you didn't want to pay the fee, however, but still wanted a nice place to take a look and take some time off your feet with all the walking, you could go to the second floor of the museum. There was a really nice bar or restaurant to grab an Esperol spritz or a slice of pizza, maybe a cannoli, and just take in the sounds of the city below. As you can see from here, you could really get a feel for the city and as far as the layout and everything goes. Look closely and you will see many of the monuments or other points of interest from this vantage point. Walking into the Colosseum is if I was walking inside of a history book. Back in my high school days, I would read about Rome, the Colosseum, and all that happened here. The gladiators, the executions, the famous historical figures, some of the most famous actually, walked in here and some even died here as well. This just kept circling back in my mind as our guide described each area as we went through. The details from where one sat with the ladies sitting at the very top, the prestigious men in the center levels, and a separate entrance for the Caesars. This is still the largest standing amphitheater in the world today despite its age. Its construction being completed in 80 AD. And honestly, the, the age of everything here just is still mind boggling to me. This was the theme of the city actually throughout, to be honest with you. 
in the States, something that's 150, 200, 250 years old is a, such a major thing and revered and protected. Here though, that wouldn't even blip on the radar and could easily, just as easily be modern in comparison. Originally, we planned to go see the Trevi Fountain in the daytime, but we ended up not getting there until probably 9, maybe 10 o'clock at night. This was really a blessing in disguise, though, because of the clear night and the electric atmosphere, so we definitely took advantage of it. Despite it being the time of day, the area was still packed with people and activity. There were a lot of restaurants around and good places to grab some wine and food. As you can see, it's one of the most famous fountains in all the world and a very popular place to come and declare your love, as one couple while we were there got engaged. There was even someone who said she threw a coin wishing for eternal love. I'll say the closest brush with the shadier side of Rome came the moment we got there. I don't have any video footage, of course, during this time, but boy do I wish I had been recording. Fortunately, I had watched other YouTube travel videos about various scams and kind of what to look out for. And I definitely strongly suggest you do the same if you're going to Rome or really any country that's not your own. It can save you a lot of headaches and quite possibly your life or at least life altering events. For us, as we arrived, we were greeted with two options leaving the train station wait for the very long line of the local taxi or take the offer of one of the ones who are conveniently walking through the crowds offering a taxi ride this was one of those trust your gut moments for me but despite and despite rather initially taking the offer we turned around and made our way back to the much longer but definitely safer line looking back this might have been the best decision i made on the trip also, just FYI, if you're using an app like Uber or anything like that in Italy, these are tied to the local taxi services, which actually makes it quite nice and easy to use. Briefly, I will say, as I have in other videos, if you're traveling to Europe, I strongly suggest you go the B&B route or bed and breakfast. And whether that's Airbnb, Verbos, or any of the others, the prices for the room, and especially the locations, will not be beat when you compare them to other hotels. With a very little effort, we were able to find great location within a short walking distance to the Colosseum, and as well as other sites as well, without really being on the beaten path. I will also leave a link in the description below as to where we stayed. If you do stay near the Colosseum, you should definitely stop and eat at Trattoria El Tetorello. Boy, I hope I said that right. I'll leave a link in below as well. As with most places, it is best to eat where the locals eat, and this came highly recommended to us. It is a perfect slice of Italian cuisine with a lot of options to choose from. If you go, ask for the waitress May. She's excellent. We loved her. We stopped in each night. It was a very short walk from our Airbnb just down some stairs, which you see below. Each time we were greeted with a big smile as if we were old friends and seated almost immediately, even if there was a line, and that was kind of cool. So that was a bit of Rome. Again, if you're planning a trip to Europe, this is a must-stop, must-see city, especially if you've never seen it before. Again, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Also take a look at a few of my other videos from Europe, Lisbon and Madrid so far, but there are more to come. As always, safe travels.